I hope you're well. I really hope you've been looking after yourself and that you've had a good week. So we are going to do two little cruises today. We're going to do one down the Welford Arm to the wharf, which is really exciting. There's a little story that I'll share with you about that stretch. And then we're going to find somewhere nice to moor along the Leicester Line. Sun is shining. Oh, it's just beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to this cruise. Let's get going. Oh, I haven't got the tiller. I haven't even got the tiller on. Right, we are approaching the junction which we are going to turn off to go down the Welford Arm. Hi, here. So we're we'll going afterwards. Hi, yeah. No room down there to pull, we have to bother the lock. Okay. So the boat has just told us that there isn't any room down the end to moor, so we'll have to moor near the lock. And you can see why it's such a popular stretch of water. It's really beautiful. The Welford Arm is only 1.6 kilometres in length and it has just one lock. It was built as a feeder for the reservoirs back to the Leicester line. And when you get to the end, you reach a very picturesque village called Welford. Now at the beginning I said this stretch of water has got an interesting story and it involves a lady called Mary Gilbert who I found out about because I kept seeing her name on the walks that I was doing in this area on the little signposts. No wonder she has a walk named after her because this pub here, the Wharf Inn, she continued to run after her husband died in 1904 but not only that she set up two working narrowboats that she named after her daughters Gwen, Mary and Julie. Welford Wharf supplied local people with coal and wool so I'm guessing that Mary Gilbert's two working boats carried those goods. And this bridge is called Gilbert Bridge. So here we are, this is the only lock on the Welford Arm. It's the cutest little lock I've ever seen. It's lovely. So as we arrive at the gate we have somebody who's opened the lock gate for us which is brilliant and then this chap who's walking his spaniel closes the lock gate behind. People are just so helpful. And now we are in the highest pound on the whole of the former Grand Union system, this stretch of water.
there's a really pretty little marina here which I'll show you I think it's Walford Marina it's called It's such a quiet and rural little marina with some actual long-term moorings outside but they are limited and I read that even though people may have tried other marinas with more facilities they come back to the peaceful quiet location of this marina and some people have been here for over 25 years. So some of these are private moorings and then it turns into the visitor moorings but I think all of the visitor moorings are taken. Just behind these boats I noticed growing in the grass massive examples of brown roll rim mushroom. This is a deadly toxic mushroom if you eat it but in some countries they boil it to boil off the poison however recently they've discovered that actually the toxins stay in your body and build up over time if you keep eating it so it's definitely a mushroom not to eat. Now this was once a busy wharf loading up the boats of coal and Mary Gilbert her two boats named after her daughters would have been part of all of that. Right here in this spot here. As we expected we can't really moor, there's no space for us but there is a service point where we can fill up with water and empty the rubbish which we are going to do. But there's a couple of things I'll show you about Welford before we leave. Turrets. As well as the Wharf Inn pub, there's also remains of the lime kilns that were built in the 1800s. There were seven at the time producing lime mortar for the construction industry and also fertiliser for the land. And a couple of them were used all the way up until the 1930s. Now Zephyr, who's rolled in something, came with me earlier in the week looking for tea bags in the village of Welford. In the 17th and 18th century, Welford was a prominent coaching stop as it lies equidistant between Leicester and Northampton on the main road to London. Postman Pat and Jeff's the cat. So I wonder why that is. Sculpture which replaces the original was paid for by the people of Welford in 2020. Now I can't find any link between Postman Pat and the village of Welford, so if you know, could you let me know in the comments, please? That would be really good. But I did see what the original Postman Pat looked like in the village, and well, you can see why he needed replacing. This is going to be tight. We've got a boat coming. Just ahead of us and we've got boats on either side. By the way, just in case you're wondering, I'm sure you're not, but just in case you are, I did get the tea bags. outside and because you couldn't go to the pub I have just rustled up a chili for us to eat while we're cruising for the rest of the way. I'm starving and that will warm us up.
And then I notice field fare in the trees and there's very dark, the light's not right to get a good photograph of them, but I know it's there and I'm really excited to see them. November has not made a subtle entrance. We have had high winds and rain. It's actually been quite cold. So it's been really important to keep the boat warm. So it has been dark and miserable all day. I have not seen the sun. Despite trying to brighten up my day with a bright yellow jumper I still think I need to make something that's like home comfort food boat comfort food so this is what I would like to call a deconstructed banoffee pie however it has hardly any of the elements of banoffee pie so I'm calling it a demolished banoffee pie basically I'm heating oats with walnuts and then adding maple syrup stirring it in the stove pan until it's nice and gooey and then basically throwing it all over some bananas. It's absolutely lovely. But despite the wind and rain, November still brings some beautiful things to get out and see. There's loads of it.
November's made an entrance, it's shaken all the trees. Now the towpath's soggy and garnished all in leaves. November blows the narrow boats, rattling every chain. And when the sun tries shining, November chucks down rain. Daylight's gone and hidden, it's refusing to be friends with November and its antics, so darkness now descends. But look along the hedgerows, there's reds in every hue, some of them on berries and some on feathers too. Look down where you are treading, there's so much to explore, as mushroom worlds are spreading upon the forest floor. So long as there's a teapot that's full of strong hot tea, and there's logs upon the fire, the November's fine by me.